A young man named Leon has a very special ability to read minds. Using his psychological talents, he and his friend Jayan solve many mysterious cases together. The film starts with a childhood memory of Leon. He was with his parents in a small apartment. Leon threw a tantrum, demanding that his parents buy him a puppy. Moreover, he wanted to have a younger brother. Following their son's wish, his parents took him to buy a puppy. At the same time, a massacre occurs in the neighboring apartment. The murderer heartlessly kills four victims, then stages the scene by cutting the gas line and igniting the microwave. Just as Leon's family enters the elevator, the building explodes. The elevator malfunctions, trapping them inside, unable to move or escape. The fire starts spreading, causing the residents to evacuate in panic. Luckily, a security guard discovers Leon's family trapped and successfully rescues him. However, the elevator cable suddenly snaps, causing Leon's parents to fall. When firefighters arrive, the building is fully ablaze, and the toxic smoke makes Leon pass out. But a student discovers him. He bravely hugs Leon and jumps from a high floor, both landing on a car. Despite the fall, both brothers survive. Leon only manages to see the name of his rescuer, Sun Mo, before passing out. From then on, he begins to have psychic powers. Many years later, Leon has grown up. He loves visiting the morgue and touching the storage drawers to feel his powers. His psychic ability allows Leon to see the cause of death of the corpses. Today, he is invited by two investigators to use his psychic ability on three charred bodies. After a brief warm-up, he gets to work. Images of the night of the crime appear. Along with that are some clue numbers. Leon provides those numbers to the two investigators. After pondering for a long time and checking again, it turns out those numbers are the victim's underwear size. The doctor is extremely frustrated. She is about to give the boy a hard slap when there is a sudden knock on the door. It is prosecutor Sun Imo who has been invited to assist with the investigation. Sun Imo was also the one who saved Leon during the fire years ago. The two doctors try to distract Sun Imo, but he notices something very suspicious about them. Meanwhile, Leon is hiding in a morgue drawer, waiting for the right moment to escape. Sun Mo discovers his younger brother is there. He tricks the two women out and locks the door. When he opens the drawer, he finds his younger brother Leon lying inside. The boy reiterates the evidence he has psychically obtained. Leon is hoping to get credit and avoid punishment, but Sun Mo doesn't care. Sun Mo shoves Leon back into the drawer and locks it to teach him a lesson for not listening. Leon lies in the drawer, his head gradually touching the surface. Images of the deceased begin to flash through his mind. Leon begs his brother for forgiveness, but Sun Mo just stands and smiles. Leon passes out. Later, Sun Mo interrogates a witness who has seen everything at the hospital that night. The culprit is a woman with a mental disorder. The woman kills people and sets the hospital on fire. At the meeting, the police and prosecutor's office conclude the culprit is the mentally ill woman. However, police officer Eun Jisoo discovers similarities between this case and the apartment fire from years ago. Therefore, they need to investigate further. This makes her father, Chief Byung Ho, very angry. He demands the meeting be adjourned. Meanwhile, the female Lee Jae-in is moving to a new place with her aunt. While changing in the supermarket, someone watches her through a wall hole. Sensing something is wrong, Jae-in checks her surroundings. When she looks through the hole, their eyes meet. Both are extremely shocked. She chases after the pervert but loses track of him. Leon is on his way to school when he bumps into the pervert. The physical contact makes him see all of the man's wicked deeds. Coincidentally, Leon is wearing the same outfit as the voyeur. He walks and chats on the phone with his best friend. Jayan is filming him from behind because she thinks he is the pervert. She accidentally records Leon talking about sensing a dead person's underwear size. That evidence is enough for Jayan to confront Leon and expose him. He recalls the earlier memory of bumping into the pervert, in which Jayan's silhouette appears. He insists he has never seen her in the restroom. But Jayan hasn't even mentioned that incident yet. There is nothing left to argue. Jayan kicks Leon straight in the groin. When Leon reaches out to protect himself, the physical contact makes him see how Jayan has been bullied by her classmates. However, Leon holds onto her leg for too long. Adding to the earlier incident, Jayan drags Leon to the police station for questioning. Luckily, the police officers there know him because he had been a mischievous child who had to attend juvenile reform school. Later, Officer Jisoo comes to bail him out. Jisoo scolds him for always getting into trouble. But Leon boasts that he will use his superpowers to overcome all difficulties. Due to the recent incident, the teachers at school hold a meeting to discuss expelling Leon. Not only that, he has jumped from the bottom rank to the top five in his class. Due to his odd, late-night behavior, the school suspects he has stolen the answers. Arriving at school, Leon's friend tells him the math teacher is looking for him. At the same time, Jayan also arrives at the school. She is a new student there. Furthermore, she is in the same class as Leon. As soon as she reaches the hallway, Jayan sees Leon. Seeing him, she immediately follows. Leon goes to the teacher's office to find the math teacher but doesn't know what he looks like. Jayan points out who the math teacher is to Leon. She intends to show the teacher the video of his behavior, but he stops her to explain. 
Before he finishes, the teacher drags him inside to reprimand him. The teacher suspects Leon of cheating. In truth, he has copied the answers from the person in front of him using his ability. Unaware of how severe the consequences could be, Leon keeps smiling and denying. The teacher gets angry and threatens to call his parents. Leon reminds him that he is an orphan. Moreover, he will be graduating soon. He pleads with the teacher to be lenient and not expel him. The teacher doesn't care about his explanations. Leon shouts in frustration. The teacher then grabs a stack of books and hits him. Fortunately, the gym teacher intervenes. Leon, feeling down, sits alone on the rooftop. He considers calling his brother for help but ultimately decides to endure it on his own. Before gym class, some classmates approach Jayan to inquire about her background to see if they could befriend her. She runs to the rooftop, hyperventilating, then eats candy to calm down. In reality, her family's situation is tragic. Jayan's father was the security guard at the apartment five years ago. Due to his connection to the victims, he is wrongly convicted. He has been in prison for 11 years without being exonerated. In everyone's eyes, Jayan is the daughter of a murderer. Everyone looks down on her. As Jayan is about to leave, Leon jumps down from above. Thinking she is about to lose her first kiss, Jayan closes her eyes and braces herself. But luckily, Leon grabs the railing and avoids the collision. For some reason, Jayan gets angry and walks away. Leon tries to explain, but she doesn't care. To her, Leon is just a pervert. After a few basic steps, Jayan successfully solved the problem. The math teacher praises her wholeheartedly. Jayan smiles with hidden joy. At this point, the teacher shifts to criticize Leon. He remarks that Leon is an orphan with no one to guide him. This comment deeply affects Jayan. She immediately counters the teacher's opinion. She argues and states how someone as clueless as Leon can't possibly cheat on tests. She also condemns the teacher for publicly humiliating Leon. The teacher is furious at this rebuttal. He makes a bet, if Jayan finds the real culprit, he will publicly apologize to all students, otherwise, she will be expelled. The deadline is the next math class. Afterwards, Jayan sits in the restroom, berating herself for her foolish actions. More regrettable is Leon's misunderstanding that she likes him for accompanying her. In truth, she acts out against the detestable teacher. Leon offers to help her investigate. He then attempts to introduce himself to Jayan. She dismisses it as a creepy gesture and walks away. That evening, Leon sneaks into the school to find evidence. Confidently, he uses his powers to touch the lock, but can't unlock it. He can only see the first two digits of the code. Just as he is about to use his mouth, Jayan suddenly appears behind him. With a single press, Jayan successfully unlocks the door using the school's founding date as the password. After some searching, Jayan finds a very intriguing drawer. Inside are many confiscated items. Leon reaches in, and Jayan swiftly closes the drawer. Despite his hand being caught, contact has been made. Leon sees a pretty girl sneaking and taking something from the drawer. Leon is so focused that his nose bleeds. Jayan is utterly perplexed. She quickly grabs a stun gun due to Leon's disturbing behavior. They continue their search. Jayan discovers some answer sheets with pre-written results. She is baffled. Leon suggests that the intruder isn't there for the answers. Perhaps they take something more valuable. While deeply engrossed, the school guard passes by. Both quickly find hiding spots. Upon contact with Jayan, Leon glimpses fragments of her memories. Subconsciously, he utters the sequence 3.145. Jayan is surprised that Leon knows that number. It is her father's prisoner uniform number. On their way back, she wonders how he knows about 3.145. Suddenly, she notices someone following them. Jayan panics and turns to attack, only to find out it is prosecutor Sung Mo. He had supported Jayan's tuition during her time at the orphanage. Jayan also realizes he is the prosecutor investigating the frequent arson cases on TV. It turns out they live on the top floors of opposing buildings, easily visible to each other. The next morning, Leon plans to lock all school entrances to find the culprit. Then he sets off the fire alarm. Finally, he stands at the fire exit, using his psychic ability to identify the thief. Many memory fragments overwhelm Leon, causing a nosebleed and collapse. Since nothing happens, everyone returns to school. The PE teacher scolds Leon for his reckless behavior. But during their interaction, Leon sees memory fragments of a girl in the PE teacher's mind. Leon tells his close friend that So Hyun hides a pregnancy test in a yellow bag. That bag is confiscated by the math teacher. Fearful of her pregnancy being exposed, So Hyun sneaks into the teacher's room that night to retrieve the yellow bag. Leon then informs Jayan that he finds the culprit. He plans to reveal the truth, but Jayan intervenes. Not wanting to expose the secret and harm So Hyun, Jayan prevents Leon from disclosing the truth. At the same time, in the gym, Jayan's friend Daebang is fighting with So Hyun's boyfriend, the one responsible for her pregnancy. During math class, the teacher starts mocking Jayan's family. He ridicules her because her father is a murderer. Jayan angrily reveals the truth about the leaked test answers. 
It turns out the math teacher provides midterm answers to some students. The recipients of the answers are all wealthy, and the math teacher has accepted bribes. The teacher still tries to feign innocence, but one student involved in the case confesses everything. Another student secretly records the scene on their phone and posts it on the school's fan page. The news spreads the next day, and the math teacher is fired by the school. Jayan is extremely distressed. She drags Leon to the rooftop to question him. He clumsily says that Daybine is the informant, claiming he knows nothing. As they are about to shake hands for solving the case, they both receive phone calls. It turns out the police have caught the real pervert. Thus, Leon is exonerated. At this point, Jayan realizes she has accused Leon wrongly. She wants to reconcile, but since the pervert is caught, Leon doesn't care about shaking hands anymore. That night, Jayan plans to confess to prosecutor Sung Mo. She is surprised to see Leon there too. Upon noticing, she quickly disappears. However, she overhears Leon's conversation with his brother. From that, she learns about Leon's psychic abilities. When Leon senses her, Jayan boldly asks about his special abilities. Leon, feeling enraged, likens himself to a monster, but Jayan doesn't think so. She feels it is a gift from God. Furthermore, she really needs his help. Jayan confides in him about his psychic ability. He says the most sensitive part of his body is his hands. But Jayan suggests it is his lips and kisses him directly. Startled awake, Leon realizes it is just a dream. He feels extremely regretful. On the other hand, Jayan is pondering over Leon's psychic abilities. At breakfast, she wonders what it would be like if she could exonerate her father, but she dismisses that thought. When they meet under Leon's house, he expresses his desire to help Jayan find evidence to clear her father. Angered, she wants him to keep her father's secret. Then she leaves. Meanwhile, a witness to the hospital fire a few days ago was on the way to the prosecutor's office to testify. On the way, his car gets a flat tire. A mysterious figure in black approaches with a hammer, ready to attack. After school, Jayan takes a part-time job at a convenience store. A mysterious figure in a black coat follows her. It turns out to be the math teacher. He carries a strong acid bottle and throws it at Jayan's face, but Leon appears just in time to stop him. Leon pins him down, intending to make him taste the acid, but Jayan stops him. The math teacher is caught off guard. Subsequently, he is escorted by the police back to the station for questioning. That night, Prosecutor Sunimo receives a report. The witness to the arson case has been brutally murdered. The evidence left at the scene is a peculiar chain wrapped around the victim's leg, seemingly a challenge from the perpetrator. The next morning, Sunimo finds all the cases he has been investigating are connected to the same perpetrator. Moreover, the perpetrator is the one who caused the fire at Yangxian apartment 11 years ago. At school, Jayan's classmates come to confront her. They find out that Jayan has lied about her father's identity and her life. Embarrassed, Jayan pushes them away, flooded with frightening memories from her old school. She hurries to the rooftop and cries. Leon sees and chases after her. Jayan says whenever she feels pressured, she has to breathe into a paper bag to calm down. Leon also says that when he was young, Sunimo sent him to an orphanage. So his childhood becomes very violent and cruel. Although he hates what Sunimo did, he also hates his psychic abilities. But now he knows how to accept and appreciate it. But Jayan can't accept the truth that her father is a murderer. She is very afraid to face that. Leon stays by her side, encouraging her to wait until she is ready. The next morning, a major incident unfolds. Leon, late for school once more, has to climb over the wall to get in. Someone has painted on the wall that Jayan is the daughter of a murderer, causing a lot of confusion. Leon uses the paint jar to sense. He discovers that the math teacher has returned to retaliate against Jayan. He hurriedly runs everywhere to find Jayan but can't find her anywhere. Returning to the apartment where Jayan lives, she has moved out without him knowing. Leon sees a childhood photo of Jayan. He realizes she is the little girl he has given candy to 11 years ago. Leon is very sad about Jayan's departure. He hopes to find her someday. Two years pass, Leon has grown up. Now he is a handsome young man driving a cool red car. His friend Daybong owns a gas station in the city. Leon goes to take the entrance exam for law school. He thinks about using his psychic ability to cheat off the person in front of him but feels guilty, so he refrains. However, he is reminded by the examiner and asked to leave the exam room. Looking up, Leon suddenly realizes the examiner is Jayan. Their eyes meet intensely. This time, Jayan says she won't run away anymore. After that, they meet again at the parking lot. Memories of high school suddenly come back. Though brief, it leaves a deep impression on each person's mind. They walk together in the park. Jayan is certain that during the exam, Leon wants to eat instead of focusing on it. Sungmo has now moved to live in a more luxurious apartment. During the drinking session, Leon mentions meeting Jayan again. Currently, she is working at the Seoul Police Department. The next morning, Leon goes to the police station to find Jayan, but she isn't there. 
Furthermore, there is no police officer with that name there. It turns out Jay Ann is currently interning at the Seoul Community Center, a home within the police department. Her daily work involves dealing with very minor matters. Her job relates to troubled children and lonely elderly people in the neighborhood. Leon then goes to the Seoul Community Center to visit Jay Ann. Every day, she steadily works towards becoming a police officer. She still hopes to revisit her father's case from years ago to clear his name. While talking, they learn Joanne has gone missing. She is on a blacklist. Everyone searches for her together. Leon and Jayan run to the bridge, where they find Joanne's toy under the river. Touching the toy, Leon feels that something bad has happened to the girl. He says she has been kidnapped and stuffed into a black suitcase. While they are worried, the girl suddenly appears with an elderly woman. This makes Jayan suspicious of Leon's psychic abilities. However, what he feels is completely accurate. The police find a suitcase containing a dead body nearby. The police surround the scene and begin an investigation. Police officer Jisoo meets Jayan again. To save time, Jayan makes an analysis. She says the suitcase has been thrown from the Upper Han River and washed up here. The victim has died four to five years ago, so the gas has accumulated a lot and pushed the suitcase up from the water surface to drift here. Officer Jisoo was very impressed with Jayan's predictive talent. During the investigation, police find the victim is C.O. Jayon, aged around 40. The perpetrator's modus operandi this time resembles a previous case. The police suspect a connection between the two victims. The police chief suggests Sung Mo lead this case. He insists that he solve it quickly. That evening, on their way back to the Seoul Community Center, Leon and Jayan confide in each other. Both are surprised to find Sung Mo waiting for them. In the distance, a mysterious masked figure is observing their movements. Could this be the real perpetrator? The next morning, in a residential area near Seoul Community Center, a dispute erupts between two women. Leon sits down to comfort the girl. He also explains to her whether her act of vandalism is right or wrong. After understanding the issue, Joanne and her mother apologize to the guest. In the end, everything is resolved smoothly. The next morning is Leon's parents' memorial day. When Leon goes to get the car, a mysterious masked person follows him. Later, he goes up to Leon and Sun Imo's apartment. He even carries a very mysterious box. At the cemetery, Leon meets Sun Imo, who is there to visit his mother's grave. The two brothers confide in their parents about everything that has happened recently. They hope their parents in heaven can be at peace. After leaving the cemetery, Leon and Sun Imo go to meet Jayan. Sun Imo hopes Jayan can help Leon develop his psychic abilities. Two years ago, Sun Imo had overheard their entire conversation on the rooftop. He knew only Jayan could help with this. In return, Sun Imo will recommend Jayan for the Violent Crimes Unit, a position Jayan has long dreamed of. But she still needs time to think it over. To accumulate promotion points and become a police officer, Jayan patrols day and night, searching for violations. But violations are nowhere to be seen. All she sees are comedies. Jayan is very disappointed in herself for not achieving anything. Arriving at the crime scene by the riverbank, she's further disappointed to find Leon rolling around, nose bleeding, searching for clues. Afterward, Leon asks Jayan about the proposal to help him develop his psychic abilities. Leon returns Jayan's shoe that she lost while running to find her father. That was also the first time Leon's psychic abilities manifested. It becomes a deeply memorable moment in his mind. From then on, they both resolve to solve many cases to make the most of this extraordinary ability. That evening, when Leon returns home, he meets Sun Mo. He demands Sun Mo to accompany him to investigate the suitcase case. Sun Mo refuses, but Leon still insists on following him in his car. On the way, Leon notices a truck following Sun Mo's car, so he stealthily follows it. When Leon gets close to inspect the situation, the person quickly drives away. He immediately drives after them and informs his brother about this. On the highway, Leon pursues the truck closely. He wants to know who they are. The chase only stops when the car reaches an empty lot. Leon gets out to see where the mysterious person has gone, then suddenly he's attacked from behind. The person stabs Leon in the abdomen. Upon contact, Leon glimpses memories of the mysterious person. This person has been stalking Sun Imo for a while. When bystanders discover them, the mysterious person hastily escapes, leaving Leon lying there. He is quickly taken to the emergency room. He also promptly recalls the information he gathered for Sun Imo. Jisoo and Sun Imo are very worried about the information Leon just provided. They suspect this culprit is related to the case at Yangsiang apartment 11 years ago. At the hospital, Leon wakes up to the nurse informing him that his surgery was successful. That night, the mysterious figure visits Leon at the hospital. Seeing someone enter, Leon quickly wraps the curtain around them. It turns out to be Jayan, who comes to visit Leon. She decides to help Leon develop his psychic abilities. This makes him very happy. She wants him to reach a certain level so he can help clear her father's name from the apartment case years ago. Meanwhile, the investigation team discovers that the real Kong Seo John had died five years ago. The person in the suitcase was an imposter posing as Kong Seo John. So, Sun Mo divides the investigation team into smaller groups to gather more information. Upon hearing this, Jayan agrees to help Leon hone his psychic abilities. 
Sunimo gives Jayan a diary he had kept, documenting Leon's entire development process, for her to study. Sunimo says the training mission will end when Leon can read his thoughts. The next morning, Jayan visits her father in prison, he is very proud that Jayan has become a police officer, but he doesn't want his daughter to struggle to clear his name. He takes all the blame himself, hoping to stop her investigation, the next morning, Leon leaves the hospital, and his best friend Daebong picks him up. The two of them go to the Seoul Community Center. Daebong is delighted to see that Kim So Hyun is also working there. Leon and Jae In go to the library to find books on psychic abilities and detective work to aid Leon's development. While they are reading materials, the library manager catches a girl attempting to steal books. The manager wants to punish her behavior. However, the girl insists she didn't take the books, someone had planted them in her backpack. Leon and Jae In step in to resolve the matter. He uses his psychic ability to identify the culprit with red nail polish. After some searching, they find the girl's classmate. The classmate, out of jealousy, had deliberately framed her. And so, the matter is resolved peacefully. The girl thanks the two profusely for helping clear her name. Meanwhile, Sun Mo is announcing the victim's identity on television to gather more information about the body in the suitcase. If anyone has information about the victim's family, please contact the prosecutor's office to help the investigation. That evening, Leon takes Jay into a bookstore to showcase his psychic abilities. Leon asks Jisoo to let him experiment with books, but he fails all ten times he attempts. This time, Jisoo wants Leon to try again on Kang Seo John's book because the Kang Seo John from two years ago was an imposter. Jisoo wants to quickly identify the murderer responsible for this. But Jay in opposes Leon using this method. She requests to review the entire case file. While retrieving the case file, Jisoo accidentally meets Sun Mo. When Jae-in goes to get the case file, Jisoo encounters sun mo in the elevator. sun mo informs Jisoo that jae father was the culprit of the apartment case 11 years ago. Jisoo was stunned upon hearing this news. Then the three of them review and discuss the case file together. Unable to wait for sun mo Jisoo asks Leon to use his psychic abilities on the victim's book. Upon contact, Leon sees the victim being brutally tortured with a hammer by the killer. He also clearly sees the killer's face. The killer is a man. With the files from earlier, Leon confirms the killer is Kim Gapyong. Jisoo is puzzled since Kim Gapyong was a witness in that fire case. Moreover, he was killed to silence him. At this moment, Leon feels a terrible headache. He suddenly faints, causing the two girls to worry immensely. At the same time, in prison, Jayan's father, unable to bear the injustice, does something drastic. Leon also wakes up. They realize Kim Gapyong was hired by someone else to commit the crime and was then killed to silence him. His statements were completely false. While waiting for the bus, Jayan receives an unexpected call from her aunt. She informs her that her father has hanged himself in prison. Jayan is utterly shocked upon hearing this news. She collapses to the ground in despair. Fortunately, Leon is there to hold and comfort her. The two quickly catch a taxi and head to the prison. When they see her father again at the prison hospital, fortunately, he is not dead yet. He wants Jayan to consider him already dead. The sins he committed were too great. He doesn't want Jayan to waste her time on him. However, Jayan refuses to give up. She promises she will definitely clear his name. That night, Leon returns home. When he touches the lock, he realizes someone has broken into the house. Leon calmly goes in to check, but everything is intact and nothing seems unusual. He goes to the security room for camera footage, but the system is down for maintenance, leaving no data. Leon and his brother return to the apartment. They find that the photo of Sun Mo with his mother has been stolen. Sun Mo explains that he left Leon at the orphanage and fled Korea to escape someone. But now, he is determined to kill that person due to their grudge. The next day, the secretary hands Sun Mo a file containing a lot of evidence of Kim Gapyong's crimes. After that, a meeting is held to announce that Kim Gapyong is the culprit behind the murder and the body in the suitcase. Not only that, he is also the head of an illegal human trafficking ring known as Dragon Employment Agency. Sun Mo assigns everyone to quickly gather more evidence to take down this organization as soon as possible. At the library, Jayan tells Leon about the clue that Dragon Employment Agency has been trafficking the identities of the victims. She wants to investigate with him. The two pretend to be job seekers and drive to the employment agency. In the waiting room, a broker comes to talk and collect their personal information. When Jayan mentions that they are in credit debt, the broker becomes very excited. He thinks they are easy targets, so he even offers them drinks. But when Leon picks up the bottle, he sees that they have put some dangerous powder in the drinks. Seeing the situation is unsafe, the two try to leave but are discovered by the broker. Through the security camera, he realizes they are imposters investigating, so he orders his men to eliminate them. Without hesitation, they fight back, taking down the men one by one. In a moment of carelessness, Jayan is attacked by one of them. Taking advantage of Leon's distraction, the broker pulls out a knife to attack him. But Leon quickly overpowers him and holds him back. Using the broker as leverage, Leon and Jayan retreat towards the elevator to escape. 
When the elevator doors open, police forces rush out unexpectedly to subdue them. The support team along with Jisoo quickly arrive to attack, making the company chaotic. Taking this opportunity, Leon and Jayan try to escape via the stairs but accidentally run into Sanimo. The two have to run to the rooftop. After escaping, Jayan tells Leon why she doesn't run away anymore. She wants Leon to use his psychic ability to read her past. Jayan extends her hand for Leon to sense. However, taking advantage of the moment, Leon suddenly gives Jayan a kiss. Before that, Sunimo reports Dragon's crimes to the chief of police, requesting his support to dismantle the criminal ring. Shortly after, authorities and Sunimo's team arrive, arresting the criminals and taking them to the station. Back on the rooftop with Leon and Jayan's psychic conversation, Leon unexpectedly kisses Jayan, leaving her stunned. Taking the opportunity, Leon confesses his feelings to Jayan. He has followed her, protected her, and all the training was just an excuse to be by her side. Jayan asks Leon what he saw in her past. But at that moment, Leon is only focused on Jayan, so he doesn't see anything. Jayan blushes deeply, feeling embarrassed by this cunning young man who tricked her. As they are about to leave the building, Jisoo, the investigator, spots them. Fortunately, both are safe, so Jisoo lets their unauthorized actions slide. Afterward, the three of them happily go out for dinner. After a satisfying meal, Leon walks Jayan home. They have no idea that Sunmo was watching them from a distance. The mysterious figure is also observing everything from a nearby rooftop. The next morning, Sunmo discovers his front camera has been tampered with by the mysterious figure. Somewhere, the mysterious figure reveals his face. He is watching Sunmo through his phone screen. In the interrogation room, investigator Jisoo questions the broker about the murder case and those involved. From the broker's testimony, she suddenly realizes that prosecutor Sunmo was also connected to the case. Later, in the office, Jisoo questions Sunmo about this. She suspects that he deliberately let Kim Gapyong be a witness and stole the video evidence. However, Sunimo produces the camera that the mysterious figure had installed in front of his house to prove his innocence. He wants Jisoo to withdraw from the case to avoid future danger. Meanwhile, Jayan calls Leon to inform him about their next training location, no other place than his own house. The diligent young man cleans his house thoroughly to welcome Jayan. Leon also tells Jayan about the mysterious figure breaking into his house a few days ago. Moreover, Sunimo and that figure have a very deep grudge. Then, the two go to Sunimo's room to practice. But Leon can't read anything there. So, they move to Leon's room to practice, but his ability doesn't improve either. That night, when Jayan returns to the Seoul Community Center, she is informed that the CCTV system has been sabotaged. Upon entering, she finds a strange man in her aunt's art classroom. No one else but the mysterious figure who has been watching them. Meanwhile, Leon is trying to psychically read Sunimo's past through the dictionary his mother had given him. Finally, he succeeds in reading Sunimo's past. Leon sees a memory of Sunimo with his mother. He quickly runs to the center to share his success with Jayan. Arriving, he meets a mysterious figure but doesn't recognize him. They go to the park and chat under the falling snow. While watching the snow, Jayan suddenly grabs Leon's hand. All the memories of their time together flash in his mind. Then, Leon doesn't hesitate to give Jayan a passionate kiss amidst the falling snow. Not only that, he also gallantly kneels down to tie Jayan's shoelaces. He doesn't want Jayan to avoid her past anymore. She shouldn't run away or cry alone because now he is there for her. Leon wants Jayan to transfer all her painful past to him. From now on, he will only create happy memories for her, one she deserves. After that, Leon walks Jayan home. All of this is observed from a distance by Sung Mo. Sung Mo then returns to his office to review the security camera footage. He discovers the mysterious figure's movements and where he changes clothes. He questions the broker, knowing Kim Gapyong had called him before dying. The broker says Kim Gapyong had requested that he take a woman named Kim So Ryan to a safe place. However, when he arrives to pick her up, she has vanished from the hospital without a trace. That night, when Leon returns to the apartment, he proudly tells Sun Mo that he has read a piece of memory from his dictionary. It is a memory of Sun Mo studying with his mother. This shows that Leon's training has been effective. Both of them are very happy. The next morning, a press conference is held. The press conference announces the suitcase murder perpetrator. Additionally, the police have dismantled the Dragon Company's human trafficking ring. Leon and Jayan decide to relax and unwind after many days of hard training. They go to a creative toy store to make their favorite items. In the interrogation room, Jisoo and her colleague discover an important clue about a woman named Kim So Ryan. Both of them are puzzled as to why prosecutor Sunimo has concealed this crucial lead. At this time, Sunimo retrieves a map of the security cameras around the investigation area. He follows the map to a small alley to investigate the clue about the mysterious figure. He goes through the places the figure frequently visits. The path he usually takes leads to the Seoul Community Center. In the examination room, Dr. Hong and Jisoo discover that the mysterious woman described by Kim Gapyong is actually Kang Eun-ju, Sun Imo's mother. 
At this point, Jisoo suddenly realizes that the body found by the police in the fire 11 years ago was not Sun Imo's mother, it is possible that she is still alive under the name Kim Song Hee. After the date, Leon walks Jae-in home and gives her a gift. When Jae-in returns to her room and opens the door, she finds a handmade Christmas tree model Leon has crafted from memory. The gift reminds her of memories with her father, so she is very moved. She runs outside and hugs Leon. However, while wiping Jae-in's tears, Leon reads her memories of the fire 11 years ago. He is horrified to realize that Jae-in's father, Yoon Tae-ha, is the suspect in the arson murder case back then. At that moment, it begins to rain. Jae-in tries to explain that her father was framed, but Leon doesn't believe her. Unable to accept the harsh truth, Leon thinks Jae-in is taking advantage of him, so he walks away. Jae-in tries to grab Leon's hand but fails. In the rainy night, Leon walks alone against the crowd with a very troubled mind. He tries to hide his sadness and his psychic abilities because he doesn't want to read anyone's secrets anymore. Jae-in returns home feeling very sad. In this matter, she is not at fault. Jisoo brings a photo of Sun Imo's mother to find a woman who had worked with her to confirm her identity. According to the witness, Jisoo is certain that this woman had seen Kang Eun-ju at the hospital. From the clues gathered, Jisoo realizes Sun Imo has known all along that his mother was alive. Moreover, he is trying to hide this fact while investigating. Jisoo then goes to the police station to find her father. She says the fire at Yangsian Apartments 11 years ago, the case at Han Min Center, and the murder in the suitcase are connected. Because Mr. Byung Ho had handled the fire at Yangsian Apartments carelessly, Jisoo was determined to reinvestigate the case from back then, despite her father's objections. Later, a colleague calls Jisoo to inform her that Sun Imo has resigned this morning without explanation. Jisoo was very confused. She doesn't know what Sun Imo intends to do. The next morning, while on patrol, Jae-in almost hits a pedestrian due to her carelessness. This fall causes an injury to her leg. When she arrives at the hospital, Jae-in sees her friend So Hyun there as well. Afterward, the two of them go to their high school gym teacher's restaurant for drinks. At this time, Leon sits in front of his parents' grave, crying. He is distraught to find out the girl he likes is the daughter of his parents' killer. That night, while looking at the music box Leon has given her, Jae-in receives a call from Jisoo. Jae-in recounts her last conversation with prosecutor Sun Imo. Sun Imo confirms that Jae-in's father was not the culprit of the Yangsian apartment's fire. The culprit was someone else. Although he can't reveal the truth now, he promises to clarify everything soon. Jisoo also reveals that Sun Imo's mother is still alive. She emphasizes that Jae-in needs to be with Leon to help him stabilize. Therefore, Jae-in rushes out to find Leon, but she accidentally bumps into the mysterious figure. At home, Leon finds the documents deliberately left behind by Sun Imo. Using his psychic abilities, he uncovers Sun Imo's secret. Feeling something is wrong with Jae-in, Leon quickly drives to downtown Seoul to find her. When he arrives, Leon can't find Jae-in, only her phone lying nearby. At this point, Jae-in has been captured by the mysterious figure. He ties her up in a terrifying water tank. Leon touches the phone Jae-in has dropped. He sees everything the mysterious figure has done. Moreover, he had seen him at the Seoul Community Center before. Meanwhile, Jae-in wakes up. She finds herself tightly bound, unable to move. Jae-in remembers bumping into a man on her way to find Leon. Afterward, he attacks her with sedatives and kidnaps her. She also realizes she had met this man at the Seoul Community Center before. Before the fire incident, she had seen him. The mysterious figure turns out to be Sun Imo's father, plotting revenge and having kidnapped Jae-in. She realizes this is the man who has taken her father's coat during the fire. Afterward, he frames her father. He is also the one who has stabbed Leon and followed Sun Imo all this time. He approaches Jae-in with a hammer, intending to kill her in the water tank. At this time, Leon is desperately searching for Jae-in's location. He searches everywhere, hoping to find any clue Jae-in has left but finds nothing. Leon is completely in despair. A colleague at the Seoul Center tries to stop him, but Leon is determined to find Jae-in, even if it is just a small clue. The police have blocked all the roads. However, the mysterious figure disguises himself and successfully tricks the police at the checkpoint. As soon as he drives away, the police receive a video showing Jae-in being kidnapped. The police realize they have released the culprit and quickly give chase. At this moment, Jae-in is struggling desperately in the water tank. After a long search, Leon finally finds where Jae-in is being held, but the door is tightly locked with no way to open it. After struggling for a while, Leon finally breaks the lock. He arrives just in time to save Jae-in from suffocating in the water tank. Jae-in is safe and is taken to the hospital by ambulance. Leon stays by her side, very worried about her health. Meanwhile, the police find the culprit's car, but he has already escaped. The next morning at the hospital, Jae-in has recovered, but Leon continues to stay by her side. Using his psychic ability, he sees the entire sequence of the murderer torturing Jae-in. At this point, Leon also realizes that the mysterious figure is the one who caused the fire 11 years ago, not Jae-in's father. A little later, Jae-in wakes up. 
Seeing Leon holding her hand makes her very happy. Jayin recounts the entire process of how the mysterious figure has harmed her and her father. All misunderstandings are resolved. Leon and Jayin reconcile from that moment on. Later, Detective Jisoo comes to exchange some information. Leon reveals the culprit killed everyone because of Sun Mo's mother. Moreover, as a child, Sun Mo was brutally tortured by that person. This is why Sun Mo was so determined to get revenge on that person. After Jayin is discharged, she returns to work at the Seoul Community Center. Detective Jisoo was also transferred to the center to continue the investigation. Afterward, the three go to an abandoned warehouse to find more clues. This is Sun Mo and his mother's first home. Following some footprints left behind, combined with Leon's psychic ability, they discover an old room in the warehouse. The three of them find a mysterious door behind a cabinet. This is the basement where Sun Mo and his mother are imprisoned for nine years. Leon and Jayin follow the path down to the basement. They discover a very frightening prison down there. Soon after, Jisoo arrives. She explains this is where the mysterious figure held Sun Mo until he is nine. They are all shocked by this harsh reality and feel deep sympathy for Sun Mo's fate. Leon continues to use his psychic ability to delve into Sun Mo's past. Through this, he sees the crimes of the mysterious figure as well as the harsh life Sun Mo and his mother endure in such a wretched place. Jisoo goes to the local police station to find more clues. Years ago, this case had not been solved because the culprit's identity could not be confirmed. The file only has a sketch of Khan Guntek with a long scar on his neck. The evidence collected has been taken by the victim's son. That person is none other than Prosecutor Sun Mo. Through the file, Jisoo discovers that Sun Mo suffers from emotional numbness due to childhood abuse from his father, a trait he has inherited. Leon remains in the basement, using all his psychic abilities to try and process Sun Mo's painful memories. Due to the overload, Leon faints, but fortunately, Jayan and Jisoo wake him up. During lunch, Jisoo reveals that the mysterious figure, like Sun Mo's father, is an illegal immigrant, so he has no information to investigate. After that, the group returns to the center to start connecting the cases together, they realize Sun Mo's father is the culprit behind all the cases. Moreover, Jayan's father has been falsely accused of arson and murder years ago. Jayan's father is in charge of the Yangtzean apartment fire case back then, which leads to him being wrongly imprisoned. Therefore, Lt. Daynam urges Jisoo to reconsider before reopening the case. However, Jisoo was determined to investigate thoroughly. No matter what, her father has to be held accountable for what he did. Jayan and Leon return to the apartment to see if they can find any more clues from the case files Sun Mo has left. However, Leon can't help but fall asleep. In his dream, he sees Sun Mo stabbing the mysterious man in the basement. The next morning at the Seoul Community Center, through investigating the files, Jayan and Leon discover Kang Guntek's current hideout. He might be hiding in an abandoned subway station. Jisoo asks for help with the case. Her colleague will complete the task in her place. Jayan and Leon hurry to the subway station, where they suspect the mysterious figure is hiding. This tunnel is where homeless children are once held for illegal trafficking. Sun Mo is the one who dismantled this illegal trafficking ring. Sun Mo heads to the subway station to find the mysterious figure. Jayan and Leon follow the tunnel to the abandoned station. They find some evidence left behind by the mysterious figure. Knowing that Leon and Jayan are at the abandoned station, Jisoo rushes there to assist. She is sure that danger will occur. Leon finds a photo of Sun Mo's mother in the evidence. Using his psychic ability, he sees that Sun Mo has a very mysterious plan. Suddenly, a figure lunges at them, startling them. Upon seeing people, the dark figure quickly flees, dropping the murder weapon. But when using his psychic powers, Leon discovers it is Sun Mo's mother. Jayan catches up and subdues her. At this moment, Leon realizes that the eggplant bag and the photo they found were brought by Sun Mo, not by the mysterious person. Moreover, they have arrived at the wrong location, Sun Mo was actually at the opposite train station. At Kanji UC station, Sun Mo faces his father, Kang Guntek. Jisoo, who is also near Kanji UC station, rushes there immediately. At the same time, she calls Lt. Nam Dae Nam for backup. Inside, Sun Mo is gradually entering his father's ambush. His father continuously applies psychological pressure on Sun Mo from outside. When the smoke bomb is thrown, Guntek suddenly charges at Sun Mo. Fortunately, Sun Mo dodges. He counters with a knife stab to his father's abdomen, but his father blocks it. As they are fiercely fighting, Jisoo arrives. She fires a warning shot to break up the fight. However, by this time, Sun Mo has lost all reason and only wants to kill his father. Taking advantage of this, Guntek escapes. He quickly deals Jisoo a fatal stab in the abdomen. Sun Mo rushes to hold Jisoo in his arms. While dying, she can only say a few words before passing out from blood loss. On the way, Kang Guntek is fleeing when Leon spots him. Leon chases Guntek intensely but loses him at the end of the station. Following his intuition, Leon runs to an abandoned railway tunnel and finds Guntek there. He overpowers him and delivers many punches for all the harm he has caused to the victims. All the memories of Guntek's crimes flash in Leon's mind. 
Enraged, he punches him with all his might. Leon also sees that Sung Mo was involved in the arson case. He wants to question Guntaek, but Lt. Nam Dae Nam's police force arrives and apprehends him. At the hospital, doctors are trying their best to save Jisoo, who is in critical condition. Sung Mo waits anxiously outside. When Leon arrives at the hospital, Sung Mo is leaving, so they miss each other. On the transport vehicle, the killer Guntaek takes the opportunity to unlock his handcuffs and escape from the police. At the hospital, after an unsuccessful surgery, the doctors announce that Jisoo has died. Everyone is shocked and grieved for the young woman. Leon returns home, deeply thinking about the memories he has seen when he touched Guntaek. He immediately goes to Sun Mo's room. Through his psychic powers, Leon realizes Sun Mo has intentionally misled them from the start of the investigation. Sun Mo knows everything but orchestrates it to deceive Leon. Moreover, he has been using Leon's abilities. Leon and Jae-in go to the interrogation room to confront Sun Mo's mother, Kang eun ju to uncover the truth. After persuading Lt. Nam Dae Nam, Jae-in takes on the task of questioning Sun Mo's mother. With empathy, Jae-in manages to persuade Kang eun ju She tells her the entire story of how she has escaped from Guntaek. He is the killer who has murdered many people at the health center. However, Leon still senses something mysterious about her testimony. It is as if she is hiding a significant truth behind her words. The interrogation concludes, and taking advantage of escorting Sun Mo's mother back, Leon uses his psychic abilities to see her memories. From this, he knows Kang Eun-ju is lying about the fire at Yangxian apartment and Hanmin Health Center. The truth, Kang Guntaek isn't the arsonist. Suspicions now point towards Sun Mo. Upon learning the truth, Leon is deeply shocked. On the other side, Sun Mo finds his father's hiding place. When Guntaek plans to flee, he accidentally steps into a trap set by Sun Mo earlier. He has to stand still and face it. Back at the police station, Sun Mo's mother stubbornly denies Sun Mo's involvement. Leon is furious, but Jae-in and Lt. Nam Dae Nam intervene to stop their argument. Afterward, Leon goes to the morgue where Jisoo lies. He uses his psychic abilities to look back at the happy memories of the two and empathize with Jisoo's pain before her death. This makes Leon even more distressed. Jae-in meets Leon outside, offering comfort to uplift his spirits. At an abandoned house, Sun Mo captures his father. He tortures him as his father had done to him in his unhappy childhood. This is his revenge for the miserable childhood his father had brought upon him. The next morning, Jae-in calls a meeting to issue a manhunt and emergency arrest warrant for the dangerous murderer Kang Guntaek. Prosecutor Kang Sung Mo was also wanted for questioning in connection to the investigation. Meanwhile, Leon revisits Sun Mo's mother, hoping she will reveal the truth. But she stubbornly refuses to say anything that might incriminate her son. The investigation seems to reach a dead end until Leon and Jae-in find a lead. Leon goes home to find Sun Mo's passport. After comparing it with police documents, Leon discovers that Sun Mo and his mother had fled to Canada for a period. But they suddenly returned to Korea despite the danger. It turns out Sun Mo was the VIP guest mentioned by Kim Gapyong. He hires him to kill two people as scapegoats for his mother. After reviewing CCTV footage across various streets, Jae-in and her colleagues suddenly discover Sun Mo's recent activities. The entire police station begins to evaluate and search. Finally, everyone finds Sun Mo's hiding place. They hurriedly move there to capture Sun Mo and his father. However, upon arrival, the room is completely empty without a trace. Leon again uses his psychic abilities to look back at the past of that room. Outside, Jae-in and Lt. Nam Dae Nam also find evidence Sun Mo has left behind in a triangular bag. After a while using his psychic abilities, Leon discovers a map. Leon and the police surround and locate two suspected hiding spots where Sun Mo might be. The team splits into two to cover both areas. Leon's team's location is Kiang Hospital. Upon arrival at the hospital, they split up to search. They search rooms but find no one. Using his psychic abilities, Leon sees that after capturing Guntaek, Sun Mo moves to another location to hold him. The next morning, Jisoo's funeral is held, and everyone comes to offer condolences to her family. After everyone leaves, Sun Mo also arrives, reminiscing about the beautiful memories they had together. Afterward, Sun Mo voluntarily goes to the Seoul Police Center to give his statement. Everyone is surprised to see him there. He asks Leon to give his mother a memorial ring. Jae-in is there to interrogate Sun Mo. She presents all the evidence accusing Sun Mo of several crimes. He doesn't deny the wrongdoings he has committed in the past but objects to Leon's psychic abilities being used as evidence against him. Because it isn't recognized by anyone, there is no specific evidence for the police to prove Sun Mo was the mastermind. The police and Leon are extremely frustrated. Shortly after, Sun Mo is released because the police can't provide enough evidence to charge him. Leon angrily stops Sun Mo and questions him. When Sun Mo tries to leave, Leon firmly grasps his hand. Through contact, Leon sees the entire scene of Sun Mo torturing Kang Guntaek. But that is just Leon's perception. He feels powerless watching Sun Mo walk away. Sun Mo goes to the detention room to free his mother. The mother and son go to the rooftop to talk. Sun Mo's mother realizes her son has completely changed. 
To ensure the safety of herself and her son, Sunimo has resorted to any means necessary. At Leon's apartment, he meets Sunimo's mother again. After contacting Sunimo, he immediately sees where Sunimo is holding Guntake. This time, Sunimo has no intention of avoiding Leon. He wants to meet Leon privately. Leon pins Sunimo to the ground for his actions. Sunimo doesn't blame Leon, but he doesn't reveal where he's holding Guntake either. Leon silently realizes Guntake is still alive. He sets out to find clues himself. Inside Sunimo's mother's apartment, Jayan kneels and apologizes for the Yangxian apartment fire, which falsely accused her father. Her mother deeply regrets this and hopes Jayan can forgive their family. Jayan refuses the apology, believing time will be the harshest punishment for her family's actions. Following what he sees through his extrasensory perception and the map from Daebon. Finally, Leon identifies three suspicious locations. They move to these places and find that Sunimo hadn't been there, he had been observing from above. After analyzing and pinpointing on the map, they find the location they need. While they're en route, Jayan receives a phone call. A colleague reports finding a body in the Han River, suspected to be Khan Guntake. Leon rushes to the morgue to use his extrasensory abilities. He confirms it's not the real Guntake. However, that night, the media reports the body found that morning is Guntake's, as authorities want to close the case quickly. Due to the Yangxiang apartment incident involving construction scandals and high-ranking officials, the prosecution wants Dr. Hong Suyun to sign off on the identification. Dr. Hong Suyun adamantly refuses. She and Jayan record their conversation as evidence. As the team discusses, Lt. Nam Daenam gets news that Sun Ho has escaped. They split up to search the suspected area, they want to capture Guntake as soon as possible to clarify the case. Police and Leon's group search through the night but cannot find Kung Guntake. The next morning, while Jayan and Leon talk on the rooftop, they realize Sung Ho was holding Guntake at Yangxian apartment complex. The entire force swiftly surrounds and enters the suspected apartment. Eventually, they find Guntake lying unconscious beneath the floor but still alive. Medical personnel quickly arrive to take Guntake away. As they leave, Leon inadvertently glimpses Sung Mo's past in this apartment on the day of the fire. In reality, Sung Mo was the perpetrator. He orchestrated the entire incident as an accidental mishap to mislead the police investigation. Leon feels the victim's pain. Overextending his extrasensory powers, Leon collapses. Fortunately, Jayan discovers this and immediately calls for help. She performs CPR to revive Leon. Shortly after, Leon regains consciousness. He can't believe the mastermind behind his parents' death is the one who raised him. At this point, Leon urgently wants to confront Sun Imo and uncover everything. Sensing Sun Imo nearby, he quickly runs off to find his older brother. The two brothers reunite in an apartment, overwhelmed with mixed emotions. Here, Sun Imo confesses all his crimes committed at this apartment complex that year. Couldn't take only planned, but Sun Imo executed everything. Sun Imo knows he is wrong but can't stop himself. Saving Leon from the fire is just an accident. Leon seems unable to accept this answer. At this moment, Jayan and the police arrive. The police immediately restrain Sun Mo. He offers no resistance and surrenders, accepting his fate. Kong Sun Mo was arrested. In the interrogation room, he confesses to all his crimes. He doesn't regret what he did to Gun Take because he believes it is deserved. That night, while reviewing evidence, Jayan unexpectedly discovers a recording of Sun Mo's conversation with the prosecutor. It turns out he is involved in an illegal bribery case. Sun Mo has dirt on the prosecutor. All evidence is recorded in a notebook. The prosecutor suggests releasing Sun Imo in exchange for the notebook. However, in the interrogation room, Sun Imo confesses but refuses to surrender the notebook. Ultimately, Sun Imo asks Jayan to convey apologies to Leon for ruining his past, present, and future. Upon receiving Jayan's message, Leon realizes it's a clue. The apology is also the name of a painting Sun Imo hangs in his bedroom. Taking down the painting, Leon discovers a hidden folder. It contains records detailing high-ranking officials' bribery activities. He rushes the folder to the Seoul Community Center for investigation, they can't simply expose the evidence. High-ranking officials will use their power to turn that evidence into trash in just a second. Jayan suggests asking the police chief Un Byung-ho to help. After some persuading, police chief Un Byung-ho finally agrees to assist them. The next morning, a press conference is opened. Police chief Un Byung-ho acknowledges all the mistakes in the cases and resigns to take full responsibility. He also promises to contribute the evidence to the investigation so that these mistakes will not happen again in the future. After the information is announced, the media makes a noise. After that, Jayan comes to the prison to visit her father. She also tells him that the case years ago will be retried. Jayan thanks her daughter for her efforts to clear her name. Switch to the interrogation of Guntake, he still stubbornly does not admit guilt. The only way is now to ask Sun Imo's mother to testify. That way, we can take him to prison and count the days of the gone moth. 
The trial of Gun take proceeds, and he stubbornly refuses to admit guilt until Mrs. Kan Eunju appears as a witness against all his criminal acts. Finally, the jury decides to sentence Gun take to death for his crimes. The end of the life of a twisted murderer. Next is Sun Nimo's trial. He is sentenced to 13 years in prison for his deliberate crimes. A punishment fitting for what he has done. One year later, Leon and Jae-in are happy together. The Seoul Central Police team continues to crack down on cases. Leon visits Sun Mo in prison. Sun Mo deeply regrets his actions now. He also misses his younger brother greatly. Dr. Hong Suyeon, going to work abroad long term, decides to pass the position of forensic examiner to Leon. She also asks Jae-in to help Leon develop his psychic abilities. Leon and Jae-in have bought a condo together and are starting a new life. They will forget all the troubles of the past and only keep the beautiful memories. That's the end of the movie. Goodbye and see you in the next videos.